Breaking news right now to report. We are hearing actually this out of Russia right now. The Russians are reporting that Putin and Trump agreed to work together uh, to deal with the diplomatic situation. They hope to make diplomatic progress on North Korea. They, of course, had that phone call earlier today, Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump. I'm joined right now by Mercedes Schlapp and Jose Arista Muno that are back with me. And I think, you know, look, one of the, one of the challenges here is that Vladimir Putin has gotten to effectively, Mercedes, do whatever the heck he's wanted to do for the last eight years. I mean, going into Ukraine, putting Bashar al-Assad there. And now all of a sudden he's got Donald Trump, who he thought maybe was his friend and kind of liked him, uh, saying, no, that's not okay. It's not acceptable. So does he now, Vladimir Putin, come to the table? Does he work with us as we deal with very, very big threats like ISIS and North Korea? He's giving the indication he will. You know, I think this is actually a fascinating development because of the fact that you've seen so much tension rise between Putin and President Trump on the issue of Syria, especially after the president uh, launched uh, the missile uh, in Syria following the chemical, chemical attack. I think when it comes to North Korea, the mere mention of the two words nuclear war, I think, raises serious concerns. The fact that you're dealing with what you would consider, you know, someone who is not mentally stable as a dictator of North Korea. And so it presents these really <laughs> fundamental challenges that our nations are dealing with. So I think uh, for Russia to become involved is, is sending a signal to President Trump that this is something that we know is becoming one of the greatest da da and dangerous threats uh, to our globe. Yeah, a big enough deal. I mean, I, I've kind of maintained all along, Jose, that as challenging as Russia is, as challenging as Vladimir Putin is, and given uh, some of the things we've seen there, you know, we, we, we need to address those. But at the same time, there should be some commonality, right? I mean, in that we're both big world powers, us more so, but we're both big deals in the world, and we effectively kind of have to act like it, right? We are the we are the hegemonic power of the world. Vladimir Putin plays a decent enough size role in the global stage. So he needs to be willing to tell North Korea to knock it off. I actually agree with you, and I agree with Mercedes on this, that North Korea is, is a big threat. And the fact that Vladimir Putin is coming to Trump means that probably he knows that he's got a lot to lose. So I hope the conversations obviously go well and they're, they're constructive. But we got to remember, we got we to gotta be very careful with Russia. We got to be very uh, careful with Vladimir Putin. We, 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 just, we just left an election where the Russian government was very involved and it shouldn't be that way. So we okay. got to be careful and he so can't be trusted. Let me, let me just, I've got more news coming in to me that I want to share with our viewers right now. We heard, of course, from the Kremlin and they were saying that they were going to work together on the diplomatic front for North Korea. This is now coming out of the White House. Uh, President Trump uh, and President Putin, they, uh, they did speak today and they agree, agree that the suffering in Syria has gone on far too long and that all parties must do all they can to end the violence. The conversation was a very good one and included the discussion of safe or de-escalation zones to achieve lasting peace for humanitarian and many other reasons. The U.S. will be sending a representative to ceasefire talks in Kazakhstan on May 3rd. They also discussed at length working together to eradicate terrorism in the Middle East. Finally, they spoke about the best uh, way to resolve the dangerous situation in North Korea. So perhaps the takeaway from this, at least the White House, as they saw it, um, is stressing the Syrian conflict while the Russians, the Kremlin, are stressing the desire to work together on North Korea. Anyway, I have to take a quick break. We've got more on all of this as it develops. I'll see you right back here after this.